The new Online Harms Act could land your favorite authors, columnists, or even YouTubers behind bars. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of what could happen because of the passing of this bill, let's talk about the mainstream media and how they're reporting on it, because it's largely a different picture depending on who you look at. Now, it's no secret that the mainstream media would be the largest beneficiary of this to knock out their competition by, well, as far as putting their competition in jail for just speaking their mind on issues. This really is a free speech issue. Now, what is this uh, from the BBC? All the way across the pond, Canada introduced sweeping new online safety rules. Canada has introduced a bill that aims to combat online abuse with steep penalties for hate crimes. Now, what are hate crimes? Well, this is, it can be interpreted however the arbiter at the time wants, and if the penalties are steep, well, they could use this to punish people for just having an opinion, including life imprisonment for inciting bad stuff, things that are not good and can't be uh, actually said on this platform. Don't want this on the transcript. But that being said, these things are already against the law in the criminal code. There is a limit on hate speech, and that ends at inciting for violence or inciting acts of terrorism. The, on, the proposed Online Harms Act requires social media platforms to remove posts such as those with that which would sexualize children within 24 hours. Now, again, doing that is already against the law and doesn't need new legislation, why would they be po putting this forward? And of course, the media is running this as the main purpose of the bill, but as we'll see later in the video, it's not the main purpose, and it'll have devastating effects on free speech in Canada. Now, I want to mention as well, this kind of circumvents what has been used, and it's not Canadian law, but the Digital Millennium Copyright Act It has been used in Canada. It's a U.S. law, but when it comes to social media companies, it grants, especially in Section 230 of the law, it, it grants them special immunity from prosecution uh, because they're not the publishers of these works. Now, the way social media companies works is they, they allow users to generate content on the website, and it, it would be impossible for them to publish every single thing that a user puts on a website, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, here on YouTube, uh, Google, uh, anywhere. It would be impossible for them to police that. So the Digital Millennial Pop Copyright Act adds section, added Section 230 to say that these are not publishers, these are uh, platforms and allowing for this to happen. This would circumvent this in Canada and allow the government to go after these social media platforms for speech that they don't like. And that's really what it comes down to. The Globe and Mail reporting online harms bill proposed changes risk proposed proposed changes risk silencing free speech. Experts warn, and you don't need to be an expert to realize that this is the direction that this is going in. Changing the law to allow people to file complaints to the Canadian Human Rights Commission over what they perceive as hate speech online, including, for example, off-color jokes by comedians could inundate the system and have a chilling effect on free speech, experts warn. I mean, like, what if Dave Chappelle happened to be a Canadian? I, I, I bet he's reading this and going, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm not. Or <laughs> Ricky Gervais, for example. These comedians that, you know, they have off-color jokes and they're funny. It's a thing, but people complain about them. And we have seen this in recent times. And even in Canada, we've seen this in recent times. Slurs force comic to pay $15,000 for tirade of ugly words, in quotes, against lesbian patron after appeal fa falls flat. Guy Earl was, a, was ordered by the, human, the BC Human Rights Tribunal to pay after a homosexual woman alleged his performance gave her post-traumatic distress stress disorder. This is egregious and this is already going on and what this will do is it will give more teeth to these tribunals and we're going to get into that in just a moment the online bill harms bill introduced on monday would change the human rights act to make posting hate speech online a form of discrimination and empower people to file complaints to the commission about such posts people found guilty of posting hate speech could 
have to pay victims up to twenty thousand dollars in compensation or even face jail time and up to life imprisonment is what's being proposed here but experts say the ability to make such civil complaint with a lower burden of proof than a court of law could have a chilling effect on free speech and while we you don't have to look far in canada to see exactly that happening the ontario court rules against jordan peterson upholds social media training order that's right Jordan Peterson, because of the things that he said on Twitter, had complaints filed against him, not not based on something that he said, particularly even about an individual person, but just file uh, complaints that were filed in general against him. And he's facing re-education training. I'm not joking. This is a reality. Really, we need to look at this intensely. Now, someone who did was Ezra Levant of Rebel News, who has been at the butt end of a lot of this over the years for things that he said. Now, here's how they're going to get you, Jordan Peterson. He he replies to a tweet uh, of Jordan Peterson, who said, excellent, retroactive crime. And we're going to get into that in just a minute here. But for years, the Canadian Human Rights Act CHRA, for example, for uh, abbreviation, has banned discrimination against people based on their gender identity or expression. You, of course, have never discriminated against anyone. But this new bill adds S13 to the CHRA, which says that the mere speech is considered discrimination if it is likely to foment detestation or vilification of an individual or a group. So now if someone watches your YouTube videos or reacts or reads on of your tweets, one of your tweets about, say, transgender athletes changing in girls change rooms and uh, as a result, likely to have hard feelings towards trans people, that's hate speech. So just because of what you said, if somebody then down the road has ill feelings towards those people, that's your fault. It's hate speech and you should go straight to the gulag. That is step one. Here's step two. Any member of the public, including non-citizens, so people from around the world, can lodge a complaint against you to the human Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, an activist quasi-judicial tribunal run by non-judges appointed by Trudeau. That's right. These are political appointments. They're not judges. They don't even have to go through the judicial training. They can get up to $20,000 per complaint from you, and they don't have to be the victim. There doesn't have to be a victim at all. Remember, it is a future crime. They, they only have to show that your tweet or video is likely, i.e., might cause one person to have hard feelings about another person. $20,000 if you pay the complaint, sorry, $20,000 that you'd pay the complainant plus $50,000 in fines to the government. Now, if you're not, if you're confused about this, why is it a future crime? This I reported on yesterday from Rahana Rezel, uh, pointing out in the act that under the Online Harms Act, the government can put you under house arrest or force you to wear an ankle bracelet if somebody else believes that you will write something hateful online in the future. Pre-crime, thought crime equals pre-thought crime. This is where we're at now per, per complainant. So there could be a new complainant for every tweet you make, every video, and, and the complainants can be professional busybodies and activists. They don't have to be the victim. They don't have to be the victim. This is really crucial in this. And there are a lot of people out there that are cry bullies that are happy that this is going on and they're happy to weaponize this and use this against their political enemies. Why wouldn't woke activists literally file CHRA complaints after every single thing you do or say on media, social media? It's free. There's no limit. And even if you win, you lose. The process is the punishment. And of course, they're going to win. Be this will become an industry to enrich woke grifters and destroy you financially. But there's the but here's the truly amazing part. The complainants can keep their identities a secret from you. This is a secret tribunal against people in public. 
secret testimony from secret witnesses who get paid up to $20,000 to take a run at you. So they can testify against you. You won't be able to efface your accuser. You won't even know what they said. You'll just find out what was ruled against you. That's, that's how they're going to come for you and for us at Rebel News and for any of us, any of us who are speaking out about this stuff, the only, the only, the only way around this would be for people to get VPNs and for all creators to leave the country and uh, report from outside. Now, of course, Jordan Peterson posting on this saying, "Excellent retroactive crime, thanks." This is an evil I hadn't considered before in response to Ezra Levant's tweet pointing out communication of hate speech. It is discriminatory, discriminatory practice to communicate or cause to be communicated hate speech by means of the internet or any other means telecommunication in context in which a hate speech is likely to foment detestation or vilification of an individual group or individuals on the basis of prohibited ground of discrimination. Continuous communication for the purpose of subsection, a person communicates or causes to be communicated hate speech so long as hate speech remains public and the person can remove it or block access to it. So if any of my videos was deemed to be hate speech, just me having it online still after this bill passes would be considered a uh, uh, <laughs> breaking the law in this case. It really is this egregious and it really is this crazy. I can't emphasize this any more than this or I, I don't know how I can uh, bring this to people's attention except to say if you are for this because of political reasons, because your your political party or your political affiliation is in power now, just consider this. What if in the future... What if in the future, real white supremacy came to power? How could they use this crime against you? Uh, I know this is a thing that people keep saying white supremacy is this thing. I don't believe that it really is a thing. Um, you know, it, there obviously there is, but there, there's dozens of them out there in the entire world. But what if that ever did come to be to come to bear bringing laws like this into into existence anyone who speaks ill of anyone who you're against can be used against you just you saying something against the political party in power at the time this could be used against you this is the kind of power you should never grant to governments you should never grant to tribunals this is awful in every way but i'd love to hear from you guys leave a comment in the comment section down below how could this be used against you and the things that you say online perhaps the comments that you even leave in this video right today could this be used against you and could you be dragged before a human rights tribunal and forced into the gulags essentially in imprisoned or fined because of the words that you say leave a comment in the comment section down below let me know what you think and we'll see you in the next one keep on trucking